The Adam and Rose Show. Hello, welcome back to another Adam and Roe show. Uh, today we're both online after a week off for vacations. Roe, are you out there? Yes, man. How was your vacation, man? That was excellent. Thank, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great, great weather. That's what we always want, isn't it? So, um, yeah, we weren't here last week. It's been two weeks since uh, we last graced the internet airwaves. But we're back this week with uh, a quick look at the reviews of the news of what's going on out there. And uh, I think Roe and I are going to have a... a quick discussion about uh, rebellion next week as well although that's only going to take up a small part of it now if the first time you're stopping by make sure you do check out all the other content on the impact lounge uh, this week i did an interview with trey miguel which is on the channel already hasn't got many hits so far and i really don't understand why because it was a pretty cool interview really enjoyed it so uh if you like the rascals obviously you're an impact fan because you're stopping by the channel then do make sure that you you have a listen to it because the interview uh, it, it was really a, it was a lot of fun so uh, yeah uh, check that out um, also make sure you do keep on checking out the impact reviews each and every week as well with uh, Trent and Carl who do an awesome job there with, with the reviews so uh, first time stopping by this channel what we tend to do is we, we review last week's sh- well, show or the show two weeks ago with some of your comments have a chat about those and we also set a trivia question before looking at the news so we'll start with a trivia question and uh, it was answered first last week by Hakeem Fuller um who got it straight away it was indeed monty brown who i was talking about saying that his finisher is now being used by someone else it was name checked on last on the last show before for our last show uh and uh, he was an nfl player for the buffalo bills and patriots i think uh, was the other team from memory so well done and it's uh Jordan grace who is using the pounce uh, as it is so uh, i got thinking about this week's trivia question and i think i've got quite a good one and it's a long-winded one so 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 it's going to take a while to explain it but if there's two things that impact or tna are famous for well, what would you say they are Row? Like, this is not the trivia question by the way uh, and this is a bit of fun okay two things that they're famous for or they get critiqued for all the time hill turns Go on. What's your second guess? And um, inner interference. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking a bit bigger picture than both of those. One was playing hot potato with the titles, changing them every tapings, uh, the champions, and also changing networks every few times, every few weeks. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, so this question is is in relation to their debut on Destination America. Okay, so it took place... Well, I'm not going to give you the date because if you're going to cheat and look it up on, on Google, at least do some work. So uh, the question was that on their debut on Destination America, uh, all of their titles, uh, which is the X Division, the Tag Title, the World Championship, and the Knockouts title, were defended on the debut episode. So what I want to know is who won those four title matches on the debut of that show that's quite a tricky one because looking at it um none of the people absolutely none of the people who (laughs) won the belts that night are with the company anymore uh but there you go that's the that's the question so we want the tag team who won the x division who won the knockouts and who won the tna world heavyweight championship as it was back then do you have any idea ro by the way I'd have to take a guess. Um, you know, I just remember for the first, I want to say, half a year, I didn't really get to catch it because I, my uh, tier of cable didn't have the channel. Then eventually, I ended up having it, and so much had happened then. But I think I have an idea, though. Okay, I'll give you a clue on the knockouts one. It was um, a battle royal for the, for the knockout division. So there you go. There's a clue, uh, and uh, the champion retained. Uh, there you go. So anyway. Right, uh, so that's this week's trivia question. Let us know in the YouTube comments below and we will read out uh, anyone who gets it right next week. Cause it is a tough one, so I doubt many will get it right. So we'll read all of you out. But of course, there was quite a few who, who got it right last week. Richard Cartledge is always in there uh, coming up with it. Whoopsie, uh, shout out to him as well. He got it right. Uh, I'm just having a look. Uh, Jim Hal Francis, he was right. Uh, C. O'Connor, 
I wonder if that's Christy O'Connor, the ex-golfer. Uh, maybe not. See, O'Connor, you got it right as well. And Lord Edward Stark. Eddie Stark. I feel like I know that name. Anyway, uh, nice to have you on board, uh, Edward. Uh, Edward. Edward. Not Edward. Edward Stark. Uh, first time I've seen you stopping by, so thank you for stopping by. Um, just having a look through. Was anyone else? No, quite a few comments, few questions. One of them from Col- long-time listener Colby Cooper, who asked about the, the UK's network deal. Uh, and we're going to cover that during the show, during the news, because uh, Roe did bring up something uh, before we start recording today that he wanted to uh, talk about, um, and it's to do with networks. So we'll, we'll cover the, the British network coverage in a little while as well. Uh, but a few other people just want to say hello to who are new, stopping by. Thanks for the comments. One under, say cuckoo. Um, Taz show is always uh, knocking about. We've got the Chris Steele show. Once again, if you haven't checked out any of Chris Steele's stuff, make sure you do check him out. Uh, he's a good guy. The J-Rock Freak. I think that's all. This guy... Everyone else has already been mentioned. Me and Nissim, AK Infinity, all the usual gang. Thanks to each and every one of you. I'm sorry if that was a quick roll call of all of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, we do appreciate your comments and we don't usually read everyone out. But uh, because it's been quite a light week since uh, two weeks since we've been on, I thought we wanted to keep our favourites uh, just still uh, name checked in there. So um, there was a couple of comments that uh, were asked. We've covered some of the topics before, such as creating a mid-card title. Um, you know, we've had that. I'm just having a look, see if there's anything else. Talking about the baby faces. Thank you for Hakeem Fullerton going back to that, saying that he he would like to see Dean Ambrose or John Moxley appear. That's never going to happen, is it, Ro? Um, I, I I don't know. I'd probably say highly unlikely, but I mean, it just all, it would all depend on him. What what is his goal? You know, um, he doesn't strike me as somebody that's just in it for the money. I think he wants to, you know, be utilize his best uh, capabilities. But then, too, you'd have to ask, you know, would does he want to be on TV? Does, does that matter to him? And if that does, then I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'd say unlikely, though. I think I saw this morning that there, there was another appearance of the Shield <laughs> is going to happen. So maybe he's got one more match in WWE. Some, some I think it might be in Meltzer said that he doesn't think that uh, Dean Ambrose will leave. He thinks he'll resign. At some point, six months down the line. Um, talking to other faces, Chris Steele said about he'd like to, to see a couple of times from Smash Wrestling or, or a vet like Nick Aldis or James Storm. Now, we've talked about James Storm before. Nick Aldis seems exclusive of NWA at the moment. Um, what do you think about someone like Magnus coming back? Would you like to see that? You know, I just find myself like a lot of people who used to be with the company under when they were under TNA. Um, I just find myself like it's hard for me to see how they would fit given where the product has moved to now. So I just think someone like him, I mean, I don't know where do you put him. Do you really see him in the main event picture? I mean, in the mid card? I mean, I just don't see where where you could fit him at. I think, well, talking about where you fit him in, that's another story. And I'm sure if they really wanted the guy, they could fit him in. But the, the British guy, he's big. You know, he, he works more as a heel than a baby face. So that creates a problem because we're already heel heavy. But as a talent, I, I quite like Nick Aldis, um, or Magnus, I should say. I, I think he's he's a good guy to have around. And, and, and it's funny, we, we talked about Jesse Goddard a couple of weeks ago. And I said that his dropkick is one of the best in the business. He, he got a brilliant dropkick. Nick Aldis has an amazing uh, kind of Randy Savage-esque elbow drop from the top turnbuckle. A thing of beauty, honestly. I, I know it sounds strange picking out one move by someone, but it really is a thing to behold. I don't know if you ever kind of that means yeah, I, anything I to you. It was no, I remember seeing it. It was pretty. It was pretty good. It, it just looks so fluid and for such a big guy. Yeah. So, so I, I would welcome Magnus back. And and to be fair, I think he's done really well with the NWA, which these days is just one belt, really, isn't it? No, no, no real program. Uh, but, you know, I'm quite interested to see what happens with um, his, his fight with Marty Skrull, if it hasn't already happened. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's coming up soon. But so, you know, I think I think that Magnus has done some really good work with them. So anyway, so th- 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 thanks for the, the suggestion, Chris Steele. I think it's another great one. Um, any comments jumped out to you? bro? Um, I think I don't know if you wanted to touch on it. Um, I just wanted to add on it. I think what Colby you had mentioned about the UK deal. Well, why do we start and with that? What I wanted- 
yeah what what I just wanted to add on is to do you think uh impact will ever um tape in UK again because it's been some years since they've been back there if I'm not mistaken yeah well from a TV taping um it's been quite some time but they did last year do a twitch show for Manchester um so where uh, from memory Callahan faced it, faced uh, Jimmy Havoc there was a couple of tag guys against LAX I remember um there was yeah, there, there, Lana Star versus I can't remember who the champion was at the time. I think was it Sue Young. I think it was Sue Young. So uh, there was a Twitch show last year. I think it was UK versus Impact or something like that. It was called. So do they, will they tape again in the UK? I'd like to think so. I, I think they would still get an audience. And if they did it, something you know, it was like a, a, a wrestling weekend that they taped this. I think they could get a good crowd there. I do think they'd be selling out arenas like they did before. I mean, the, 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 I went to three tours and they were packed. They were really good, you know, and they, and they had some good stars back then. I think it's harder these days because I just, I just don't think impact is as big over here as it, as it used to be. Um, now, just to give you listeners who are not in the UK a bit of a history on, on impact in the UK. Um, I, I'm not going to back this up with any facts <laughs> statistics because i haven't got them to hand but it was always kind of widely regarded that impact was the top uk wrestling show in the uk you know the most viewed from from Mm a viewership and the reason being is that they used to show from memory i think it was impact on a sunday night possibly i think it was a sunday night uh on a program called challenge and now challenge all they used to show was reruns of game shows so it was a weird channel for it to be on. But that's all they used to show was, was rerun of game shows. So, you know, like The Price is Right, those kind of things. Um, so it, it landed on this channel and it was shown 9 o'clock on, a, I, I'm fairly sure it was a Sunday evening. And it used to get, I, I think, like 200,000 viewers from memory, 250,000 viewers. Now, the reason why it outperformed Raw and SmackDown is that both of those shows aired, well, Raw was as live in the UK. And SmackDown, I think, is on Thursdays over here, so a couple of days after the US, uh, at about 10 o'clock. However, those are on Sky Sports over here, which is a channel that you have to pay to get. So it's not on a free-to-air channel. So that is why Impact used to outperform them. Now, uh, Impact disappeared for a little while. I think at the end of the Destination America kind of period, it disappeared from the UK, and then it kind of bounced around a few channels uh, eventually, like it, it was on, I want to say it was on Five Star or something like that. But it's ended up on Spike anyway, which I believe it is one of the sister channels of where it is now, which is Five Star. Now, Five Star is another free-to-air channel, as was Spike in this in the UK. But I think it's on more kind of, you know, digital boxes that you get. So it's available in more homes, but not a huge amount of homes. And it's still quite low down in the listings. Now, the thing that amazes me is that they're not showing impact on Channel 5, which is the fifth channel on everyone's listings. Um, Because Channel 5, all it tends to show is NCSI or NCIS, whatever it's called. You know, those type of programs. It just shows American, you know, so it's not really built. You know, Channel 5 does, and it shows really poor British documentaries, you know, on, you know, uh, the UK's best car parks to pick up (laughs) hookers, you know, (laughs) programs like that, you know, it's it's really quite poor. So, but Impact would most probably fit on there because they used to have WC Nitro from memory in its last few, you know, year or so. So I, I think there is a home for it either there or on Channel 3, which is called ITV over here. They're the two channels, really, that Impact need to get on. Um, but I, I go for five over, over ITV just because it's already on one of the sister channels. So I, I just don't understand. But one of the other benefits of it is that you can now pick it up on uh, Watch Any Time. Now it's on Five Star. Uh, it's got an on-demand service, which Spike didn't have. So anyone can watch it in the UK now at any time after it's aired. And it, because it's on at Friday night at 10 o'clock, it actually airs before the US, believe it or not, over here. We, we get impact before you guys each week yeah well yeah that explains um i remember when uh i used to when i used to have to um like say if i wouldn't be able to record it this was during when they were still on pop or even i think when they barely went to twitch there was one instance where i was able to watch uh impact the night before it aired 
And I think it was because somebody had the UK broadcasting. So I was like, oh, nice. You know, because, it, you know, it's ever since they've been on Twitch, I haven't been able to catch it just because by the time I get home, it's already have started. And uh, um, so, yeah, when that when that was happening, I was like, all right, awesome. I could watch it, you know, the night prior. But, you know, I just wonder because it seems in look, I don't have any type of statistics, but it seems like overseas like between the uk and then even india like there's a strong fan base out there and i just you know couldn't help to wonder and that, that's another one too i was thinking about would they ever go back to india because you know those, those shows you know in the past you know they, they've done very well you know as far as attendance wise I think viewership over here has gone down and it wouldn't get the same draws it used to have. But having said that, if you're a wrestling fan over here, then you'd go and watch it if it was like it was at the last time where it was part of a bigger bigger weekend. You know, like they have mm-hmm. wrestling weekends of it. Like they have WrestleMania weekend. They have something in Manchester over here, which is similar. So I think they could very easily, you know, do a, a similar size arena to the ones that they've been taping in the US. Is there much value in doing that? Most probably not, because there's going to be cost to doing it. But if they can get talent on other shows over that weekend, then obviously the talent keeps the talent happy, getting paid and getting a free trip to the UK. Although it is Manchester, never mind. Um, yeah, so that leads on to the other thing you wanted to mention about. And we know this is an Impact podcast, but AEW this week, one of the bit of news is that they're apparently going to be debuting on TNT. Now, I'm not an expert on American uh networks maybe you can fill us in a bit more robe i believe that that's where impact used to be or tna used to be back in the early days but the big bit of news about this is that it is a almost like a paid for it's a paid for program so it's like an infomercial they are paying to be on the channel for, for my understanding now i'm guessing that that they'll get ad revenue during those blocks of times that you know they sell their own adverts or something like that but it's not a TV deal where they're making money of this. This is being bankrolled, just like the whole project is at the moment. Uh, so I think you wanted to talk about it, but just before you, you come up with your comments, bro, my views on this is I think that if anyone is ever going to break uh, the WWE stranglehold, then unfortunately this is the, the only way it's going to be done is by someone bankrolling it for a year and trying to get it into people's psyche on a good channel even though they're paying, they're going to be losing money doing it. Well, you know, the channel that TNA was on before was Spike. Um, they, they weren't on TNT. It was actually WCW. And I think that's what kind of just caught me by surprise, just because, you know, myself and I'm sure a lot of people were of the mindset that a lot of uh, um, networks, they didn't find wrestling profitable. So that's why even when TNA landed on Spike, it was such a big deal. And when they lost, you know, were off of Spike, it just, you know, was such a big blow. So um, it's just interesting to see how it plays out. I understand the whole having to pay, but it's kind of like essentially they got to prove themselves because this is a startup company. And once again, that's why I, what I kind of find where I'm intrigued because it's like, what did they show? And in part, it probably has to do with the fact that you're dealing with, you know, the backers are, um, the owners in uh I don't know what the son's relationship is, but um the owners of an NFL team. So I guess that kinda is something that you can bring to the table. But I, it's just the fact that this company, you know, they haven't aired any television. You know, they have a pay per view towards the end of May, but they were able to get a seat at the table with T N T. You know, not WGN and I know I'm naming some of these channels to you and it probably just sounds foreign to you, but these are like you can get your basic uh tier of cable and you'll get these uh stations so to just be able to have that kind of conversation and i think they're also talking with showtime which is uh on pay-per-view so that you know probably wouldn't do them any favors but just the fact that they were able to get that it's just it's crazy because i had i would never think that tnt would ever entertain the idea of trying to have wrestling so it just leads me to believe like if those rumors are true that they indeed are looking to try to compete with uh wwe well the first thing is if i think for if anthem would have gone to tnt and say look we're going to give you this tv show for free we'll pay for it then i'm sure impact would have been on tnt as well so i, I don't think it's a major thing for you know being able to get on there because you know tnt it's, it's a no risk gamble it's it's, no, it's win-win for them you know they get content they don't have to pay for and they are going to get viewers tuning in for it so I, I think if anthem would have done the same you know i think tnt would 
would have taken them as well. But Anthem's in a very different place in that they want to make money. And although it doesn't feel like they're making money, they most probably are more profitable than they have been Well, in, in a good long time. However, this deal for AEW is a brilliant thing for Impact. Because if it flies, and for anyone who's not a WWE fan but is a wrestling fan, everyone wants to see this fly and do well. I don't understand these guys who say, oh, it's crap. They're slating it before it's even started. I don't care what you think about Cody, the Young Bucks, their type of wrestling. I don't care. If they are getting on a TV show and they're getting wrestling out there, getting demand, getting people wanting to see wrestling again, that's a good thing for Impact. Because that means that eventually if they do come back to network TV, which let's face it, okay, they're on pursuit, but it's not really proper TV, I'm sorry to say, then this is the only way they're going to do it, is to get someone else to say wrestling is cool again. And see where I feel with uh, Anthem, the problem that they face, and I, I guess I couldn't, I can't say it was them. I don't know if they had uh, purchased it during that time, but you know, when you look at the history of just say most recently Pop, you think about it. The first year when they were on Pop, they had the whole Corgan Dixie drama. Then the following year, they had the whole Jarrett stuff. So already like there's a and then you know you can just look back into the destination america the spike stuff and like i said that was before anthem took over so i kind of just wonder you know when you're talking about you know trying to go to the negotiation table a network would look at that and you know you would think too it's like well you know at least they've you know shown the ability to produce uh television but then it's like then again too i could see the standpoint of you know what if you know they're showing that there's you know dysfunction time and time again like you know you uh talk about being on different networks you know in a span of five years whereas you know you, you're taking a shot at this company that hasn't started and they're paying for it so it's really a no lose you know no lose situation so um but yeah i do think if aew thrives it could help impact uh land on a better station only for the simple fact that maybe a, a station can look at it like hey you know we want to get into wrestling too and then there you go so it uh, kind of all hinders, on, you know, hinders on that. But I guess I was just fascinated just because TNT, you know, it, it is a big station, and you know they've been out the wrestling game since you know WCW folded, and that was what almost what eighteen year eighteen years ago, I think. So um, I guess that's just what surprised me. I was of the mindset if they land on TV, it was going to be you know maybe on like a WGN or you know some type of local station. Yeah. Well, let us know, listeners, what you think uh, below. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously read out your comments next week. Uh, we are going to be around next week. And then the week after, I'm going to be on another vacation. It's like I'm like the guy who never works, aren't I? So uh, if you want to have a show that week when I'm away, then you're going to have to hit up Ro on Twitter and make sure he gets his finger out and finds a recording partner, as he was supposed to do last week. Enough about that. I won't mention it again. Right. OK. Uh, next bit of news we're going to move on to. Um, we joked at the beginning of the show on the trivia question that two things that uh, Impact is famous for is changing networks and hot potatoing with the the title. Well, another thing they're famous for is losing talent. <laughs> and this week, we've seen a, a few departures go. We've also seen a few faces coming in and some rumoured to be coming in. So let, let's, let's just cover some of those. So first of all, uh, this is the one that made me laugh, actually. I want to talk about Gajinda Singh apparently posted something on, on Twitter saying that he's now done with the company. Uh, I think he thanked them. I don't think he left on bad terms and those kind of things, but he said he's going to pursue his dream elsewhere. Now, a lot of people went up and said, oh, well, that's great. That's the end of the Desi Hit Squad. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ro, but this is the guy who's already left the Desi Hit Squad, wasn't it? It's not the two that are in the squad at the moment. It's the one who was replaced by the one by Gamma's son or whatever. Is that right? Yeah, but they brought him back on Explosion. Um, oh, right, they, okay. they were, it was uh, Gersinder and uh, someone else. And what's crazy is he was on, uh, I think two weeks ago, he was on Explosion. And then the following week, he asked for his release. So uh, for anyone who's saying, oh, well, that's the end of the Desi Hit Squad, it's not. This is just, this is a, a one of the members who's not on the main show anymore, anyway, who's leaving. So the, the, the Des, sorry, the Desi. Uh, I, I have to change that from the Desi because I know that Carl and Trent always pick pick up Josh Matthews for getting it wrong. So it's Desi, I think. Uh, Desi hit squad. Uh, they, they're still about and they're not changing as far as I know. Now, the other bit of news 
that's come about is apparently, and I might be completely wrong about this uh, because I've only seen things online. I haven't seen anything original from from um, Impact, but Mahabali Shira, Mahabali, I can't say it, Mahabali Shira is apparently coming back to Impact. Uh, any thoughts on this? And do you think that they will just say, wait there, we've lost a Desi hit squad member. We've got an Indian guy coming in, two and two. He's going to join the Desi hit squad. What do you think? No, I, I don't think he'll be associated with them. I think they might push him solo um, just because he's really worked on his body. He's become, you know, he's pr- pretty bigger. And, you know, we're always talking about well, who's people Cage can face. And, I mean, that's a guy. I know it might sound silly on paper, but, you know, hey. Actually, while we're talking about him, sorry, just so to jump ahead across you there, uh, a bonus trivia question for you this week. All right, listeners, this is just to see if you are actually listening to the full show or you just tune in for the, the shout outs and the trivia question at the beginning. But what was the dance sensation that Shearer was responsible for when he was last on Impact? No. <laughs> apparently this was tweeting worldwide, uh, trending worldwide, according to Josh Matthews on commentary. But what was Shearer's dance sensation that everyone was doing on each and every show when he was last on impact you must know that one do you dang what did he leave (laughs) (laughs) all right i got you on that one we'll talk about that after the show all right so yeah anyway um shira's back do you think it's a good acquisition or not um it's really kind of uh i wouldn't even say it's a lateral move it's kind of just it's there, um, you know. They're lo- They're when I'm saying they're losing people, but you know they lost a couple of people. Here's somebody who's familiar uh, with the company. Um, they're familiar with him, obviously, and it's somebody that can easily thrust in. So, you know, it. it I guess where where I'm always kind of like, okay, like I don't want to try to come across as, you know, if you leave, you can never come back. But I guess it just to me as a fan where it looks bad is when you see someone who wants to go and pursue elsewhere, you know, pursue success elsewhere, like which is fine. And then when they fail, but then only to come back and not have to work their way up, I guess that's just what kind of bothers me. Cause you know, you, you still got a lot of time that have stayed and still trying to look for that opportunity to move up the card. You know, this person goes and takes a gamble, they lose and they come back and then it's like, you know, they don't lose their spot. I just don't think that's really fair. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't think he's going to be troubling the, the top end of the, of the scene anytime soon, to be honest. If anything, he's most probably going to be thrown in with Falabar and Scarlet somewhere like that, or, or the Deze hit squad, which is the same program, I suppose. But I really can see him being thrown in there somewhere, maybe even Falabar's new tag partner, uh, because that leads us on to the next bit of news. And by the way, leave us your thoughts on Shearer. Uh, give it, you know, uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. You know, do you think he's a good acquisition or not? So I said a new tag team partner for for Fala. Uh, KM is we moved to the alumni section of Impact Wrestling on their website. Now there was a lot of rumors going around that he'd been fired. Those kind of things. He was annoyed with management. Or all this kind of rubbish. He cleared it up himself. So for anyone who thinks that KM's left on bad terms, he hasn't. He's basically he's beat up. His his knees are done. Uh, he says his body aches and hurts every day. He's been doing this for 20 years and he just decided that he doesn't want to wrestle anymore. Uh, he thanked a few people, such I think Dixie was one of them, Jarrett was another one, those kind of people. And a lot of people thought that was a dig at the current management. Uh, it, it, he, he clarified it and said it absolutely wasn't. He said they were the ones who were instrumental in his career and that's why he thanked them. And there's no bad blood. I, I think that KM was a great, you know, servant to the company. I know he wasn't here that long and he never really achieved much, but from my understanding, he does a lot backstage, you know, kind of, you know, they use his rings, those kind of things. And and he was a good company guy. So it's a shame because I would have liked to have seen him get maybe just a quick tag run, even if it was as a transitional tag champs. I think he most probably deserved something in his time with Impact. Um, What are your thoughts on KM, Ro? Well, first off, in... Maybe I'm looking too much into it and give me your opinion. You know, if a talent te- t- tweets out how many days they have left on their contract, what do you perceive that as? Do you just look at that as just them explaining to the fans or do you take it as more as just a way of, you know, them just letting people know, I, you know, this is when I'll be out and, um, you know, they're not looking to resign? 
Um, yeah, usually is it's building leverage usually to either get a new deal with Impact or whoever it may be, or it's to put themselves in the shop window to say to AEW, to WWE, whoever it may be, look, you can come and get me. Um, now, I know that Eli used to do that. I can't remember KM doing it. From my understanding of reading yeah. all the, the stuff, um, is that KM, I think, was offered a contract, but he was the one who wanted to go to a pay-per-view appearance because of his body. And he was the one who finally told it. Now, did he tweet out about his, his contract and things then? It, it, to my understanding, I think KM did it. Gersinder did it. Conley, when he was still there, did it. Eli did it. And um, I don't know who else. Um, yeah, Like I said, it, it's easy to kind of misconstrue stuff on Twitter because it's Twitter. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's just when you see certain things like that, normally contract, you know, negotiations, you know, they're kind of kept quiet while you're negotiating. But I don't know, anytime when I would see, you know, a talent tweeting that out, I mean, I just kind of would take it as maybe they're displeased and stuff. Cause you know, why would you air that out? You already know what, what's the impression it's going to give. And like, that's not to try to, you know, say that KM is telling us something different. I do think he's going to wrestle again. Um, well, he's you know, just won a tag championship, isn't he? But I think he's going to be doing it very sporadically. But he's got his own promotion, you know, so I think he's going to yeah. be involved in the scene. But um, as far as KM, um, you know, he was a guy I I thought um, he probably was suffered from them not having a mid-card title um, to say, was he going to ever be world champ material? I mean, probably not, but you never know. I think <clears throat> when you have the right, backing by creative you know they can make anyone um world champion but yeah i i really thought they missed the they dropped the ball on not giving him and follow a tag team title run especially and then on, on not, not only that but when they had their christmas book out their children's book they didn't even promote that so um yeah uh i i i thought I used to always call him. He was like a walking. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the wrestling games, but he was like a walking, created wrestler. Where I mean, this guy's move set, man. I, he would do moves I've never seen, you know, before. So he's very uh, um, innovative in that aspect. But yeah, it's just you just hate what could have been. Yeah, I mean, I mean, around the time of the Amer- America's Top Team when Bobby Lashley was feuding with them, KM I thought was going to be a breakout star from that program because obviously they recruited him. And, you know, he was getting a bit of a push. And I think he injured his knee at that point, which is why the push never came and ATM went. Um, no, ATM, that's something else. <laughs> ATT. Um, so, yeah, so, so I got distracted now. Um, it's a shame because, as I said, KM was good. And when we interviewed him, lovely guy. And he was honest. That was the other thing about him. He was really honest. So, for me, it's a shame that he's gone. But, you know, as you say, talent moves on. And this guy... I don't think he will wrestle again. Certainly not on a weekly episodic TV program. I think it will be the odd show here or there. Maybe defend the title with Fowler. He could have, he, as you said, if it had been a mid-card title, it would have been perfect for it. If they would have pushed the America's Top Team storyline further, which is a shame, by the way, that they never did, because the, the, the leader of it, I can't remember his name, Dan, somebody or other, was absolutely electric on the mic absolutely phenomenal on the mic. He, he was a better talker. Bear in mind he was MMA coach. He was a better talker than the whole roster at that time. He was cutting promos, which were just absolutely fantastic. If any of our listeners can remind me of the name, uh, I'd appreciate it. It was Dan Lambert, right? Dan Lambert, was it? Yeah, Dan Lambert. Fantastic. Um, but but at that time, KM should have got the push that he deserved. And, and he's always been that nearly guy who nearly won a title. And it's just a shame that he's, he, he never really had it on TV. But there you go. So let us know your thoughts on um, on KM um, and, and what you think. So that's another one gone. So we've had uh, Jacinda gone, KM gone. Uh, we've had uh, Shira coming back in. And the other rumour, and this is the final bit of news I want to talk about. I don't know if you you want to do a bit of rebellion at the end. But the final bit of news I want to talk about is apparently Ken Anderson is sniffing around the scene again. Mr. Anderson. Um, he was talking about wrestling in general and apparently he's, he's going to be starting to, to do some wrestling again. He was very positive about Impact and TNA during those comments. Would you like to see someone like Ken Anderson come back? It's the same thing that I find myself like I don't know, I think which is a lot of people from the past. I just find myself um 
seeing how they would fit in this current, you know, era of uh, impact. You know, it's a different type of style. You know, some of the matches, some of the wrestlers. Um, he's only 43, so um, I don't know how much he can do. Um, I don't know. I'd probably have to see, probably look, do my homework and look at some of his most recent matches. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I really don't have an uh, uh, opinion on it. I, I personally would love to see him back. And I think that he could fit in with what... Eli Drake, uh, uh, that kind of hole that Eli Drake has left. Now, wrestling ability wise, he's nowhere near as good as Eli Drake. But from a talking point of view, he can cut a good promo. So, you know, I certainly wouldn't be upset if he came back. Uh, I would actually like to see him in the program because, as I've talked about many, many times, you know, I'm I'm more about storytelling than, than in ring storytelling. So, f- from that point of view, Mr. Anderson ticks a lot of boxes. Uh, so yeah I, I would like to see him back but you know I'm interested to hear what our listeners I've asked a lot of questions of our listeners but we do want to hear you know what you thought of KM of Shearer and also Mr. Anderson because uh, I think I name dropped him a couple of weeks ago saying I'd like to see him come back um, but there you go um, anything else Ro that you wanted to cover this week yeah um, I wanted to talk to you about um, you know what are, what are you looking forward to with a week being away of Rebellion is there any match in particular you're looking forward to? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not to say I won't enjoy every match, but this is the first pay-per-view in a while where I haven't really been that excited. There's nothing on there that makes you think, I want to go and buy the pay-per-view. And we're quite lucky in the UK. We get the pay-per-view usually for free a couple of days later. On, on TV uh, after it airs for free. So it's not like I have to pay for it anyway, but it, there's, there's nothing really that, I, I don't know, is, is jumping out at me. I, I think the Gail Kim versus Tessa will be interesting. That is rebellion, isn't it? They're not holding that off or anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that will be interesting just to see if Gail Kim can still go. I'm sure she could. And Tessa's is fantastic anyway. Um, other than that, I'm struggling to think of a match on there. I mean, it'll be. I, I'm guessing there's going to be it's Lance Storm special referee with uh, Cage and Johnny Impact. Is that right? Yes, yes. I think that that will be interesting. Can we see? Is Lance Storm going to turn heel? I don't know. It wouldn't surprise yeah. me. It wouldn't surprise <laughs> me, by the way, if if he super kicks uh, Cage at the end of the of, of the match and lets uh, Impact pick it up. That would actually be quite cool. Uh, but apart from that, I, none of the other matches are really, really jumping out to me. How about yourself? What, what are you looking forward to? There's one, well, I'll say two, but one that I'm looking forward to, and then the second one is just because of the outcome. Um, really, it's the only match that I'm looking forward to is going to be, I would have to say, it's um, Callahan versus Swan, just because of the story that they've been able to build in, you know, there's added layers where, you know, you got Madman Fulton joining in, and then you obviously, uh, um, Swan had a uh, Willie Mack and and uh, Dreamer joining joining in and stuff. So I just I'm really really, really wanting to see if um, they pull the trigger and uh, Callahan becomes exhibition champion. Um, it's it surprises me that you know he's been around and hasn't had any gold up you know up until now. Well, I mean I don't want to say up until now. I know he's had, gotten an opportunity at exhibition title. So I just really want to see if they'll you know finally pull the trigger and put a belt on him. And then the other match is going to be the LAX versus Lucha Brothers. And I'm just interested to seeing what the outcome is just because it was rumored, I want to say, about a month ago that Lucha Brothers AEW deals might be exclusive. So if that's the case, then I could see them dropping the titles back to LAX and then, you know, leaving the company. But obviously, if that that rumor is deemed false, then I think, you know, Lucha Brothers can will win and then... You know, um, they move on. So um, th- that, those are probably the two matches I'm looking forward to. Everything else, um, I just kind of just find it like it just seems like it's laid out where you kind of know which way it's going to go. Um, I'm assuming we'll probably get some RVD appearance because they've really been promoting the hell out of him uh, the, for the next night. But, yeah, those are really the two matches that I'm really looking forward to. And 
uh, although as I said, I'm not thrilled by the card. That's not true. I think it's it's a it's a good card, but it, you know, uh, but uh, I'm fairly upbeat on impact at the moment. I, I I've gone, I've had a, t- a face turn here. You know, I'm actually quite enjoying it again, but I don't know. It's it's just no sparkle in there for me at the moment. That that they need a superstar, and it doesn't feel like there's a superstar in the company at the moment. I'm talking of which, Eli Drake was the last person I felt could be a superstar across possibly as well. But didn't Eli Drake look funny on this week's Impact? I don't know if you saw it at all. He just looked odd. Well, it was it was kind of one of the reasons why I thought the way that they handled it. And then look, anytime you have a departing talent that you've already recorded television for, there's really no way around it without scrapping everything. But I kind of just thought the best thing to do would have been like to let his contract just expire instead of firing him because now you got him airing on television. And, you know, there are some people who might not know that he's no longer with the company. Not everybody keeps up with the news. No, so I was so talking it, purely his physical appearance looked odd this week. It, it actually looked... You, you remember there was fake Undertaker and fake Kane and fake Diesel. It almost looked like it was a fake Eli Drake, except for the fact he talked, you know, so you could tell it wasn't him. But it, it did, he didn't actually look like Eli Drake this week. It was weird. Oh, uh, I'm talking about from that tip. Uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand it. Look, I mean, I'm, you know, I've been very honest. I haven't been pleased. I find things here and there on the product that I like. Um, unfortunately, I don't like everything, and there's some that do. And you know, once again, I always say there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but you know, just you just got to be well, you know, a person that's able to welcome a diff- difference in opinion. But um, you know, I find little things here and there. I just think, um. What they need to do, and you, you had mentioned superstar, it doesn't always have to be signing someone from the outside. It's identifying, you know, four or five people, and that's who you roll with. But I think at times where where what messes them up is it's like they essentially got to rob Peter to pay Paul. So it's like in order to get Cage over, if you want to put Cage as the main guy, you know, it has to come at the expense of a Callahan or other guys that you deem as my deem as top guys so i think that's the thing that they got to learn how to um be able to push kind of everybody in a sense where you got a solid four or five core guys yeah well on that note uh it is the rebellion pay-per-view next week but next time you hear us i'm sure it'll be after the pay-per-view has aired but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this week's show Uh, Unless there's any final thoughts from Ro, which I'll ask him in a second. Uh, Thank you for tuning in each every week. Make sure you do leave us loads of comments. You know, we we thrive thrive on them, you know. We do this show for the comments, let's face it. Uh, So make sure if you are listening to us, share it on on your feeds, uh, on your Twitter, whatever. We'd love to have a bigger listenership. And then when you answer those trivia questions right, you feel even better that it's uh, you're the first of 10,000 as opposed to 1,000. Anyway, so the trivia question again, just to remind you, is on the debut of impact on destination america there was four title matches there was the uh, tag team the x division the tna world heavyweight championship and the knockout championship can you just tell us who won those four matches uh simple as that it's simple as that quite hard but yeah the other bonus question of course being what was the dance craze that mahabali shearer was claimed to uh have swept the nation with uh, on his last run with impact let us know your thoughts on KM, on Shearer, and Mr. Anderson, and Magnus, and all the people we've mentioned. Actually, just if you know a wrestler, let us know your opinion on him. I suppose probably quicker than naming them all. Uh, anything else from you, Ro? I just want to add real quick for those you don't know. Um, I actually do the uh, Impact Review with uh, Keith from Clock Cleaners. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, we're kind of honest you know, to a fault. I know sometimes it can come across as negative, but we just kind of share our thoughts. So if you're into that, go ahead and check that out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it on my end. All right, folks, have a good week. We'll catch you on the other side of Rebellion. So uh, make sure you, you check out the interview that I did with Trey Miguel. It was really good stuff. It's a shame that it hasn't got many hits so far, but honestly, if you listen to it, you will enjoy it. It's only 20 minutes. It's a lot of fun. This week, hopefully, I'm going to be talking to Cody Dina. So also, if you do listen to Trey Miguel, leave some questions for Cody Dina on, on that YouTube clip as well. All right, but for the time being, thanks, and we'll catch you all next week. <laughs>